as always, the way we start this for every S and D hard point, we always start off with understanding that there's a 50 yard line and then we have three lanes, bottom, middle, top, as always. Now, the thing about control, though, is with control, you obviously don't have to worry about spawns that much. You don't have to worry about flipping spawns and having the enemy spawn behind you. Uh, so quite frankly, if you're red team and you're pushing up on this left side of the map and you are sitting over here on this left side of the map, you're constantly going to be spawning blue team and over here in like the bottom right of the map. So I'm around here now, obviously vice versa to that. If we had a player pushed up over here on the right side of the map and this player didn't exist, these players would all just be spawning on the left side of the map. Uh, so very important to call out to your teammates if you're pushing up. Um, obviously, look at your mini map just to see where our teammates are and where we are influencing spawns. Now, just getting right into it for Karachi control, I'll tell you right now, you definitely always want to try and control this uh, shack side or top red just so we spawn these enemies out as far as possible from both points. Now, another cool thing about control is if you actually have your teammate push up into this quadrant, these enemies will more than likely spawn safe and away from you guys. But of course, because it's Call of Duty, the game may sporadically spawn them and they still may spawn behind you, which is not fair. It should not happen, but it could happen. Just letting you know. Uh, but ideally, if we both push up, these guys are spawning back here. Um, now, once again, the cool thing about control is you can actually have all four of your teammates pushed all the way up into their base and they're going to keep spawning there over and over and over again, uh, where we could say like an ideal setup is if we got multiple waves of kills, we can push up, have all four players just constantly spawn trapping these enemies and not giving them the time of day. But first, how do we even get into that spawn trap? Well, this is where we can talk about the 25 yard line for both sides, our 25 yard line and the enemy's 25 yard line. Essentially, when you guys are breaking off and the game first starts, we can obviously push up and all hit the 50 yard line, right? Just like S and D, the whole point of the 50 yard line is by the time you get there, that's when you're running into gunfights. Now, once kills go down, uh, let's say, these two guys die, they spawn up, and these two guys die. And let's say this player says, all right, you know what? I'm one shot, so I'm going to play my life and play to block the spawns and force spawn them over here towards this quadrant. And when number two calls out, guys, I'm blocking shack spawns. They're going to be spawning junkyard or chicken coop. This is chicken coop or this is junkyard. Our teammates over here, they would spawn up and understand that these guys are influenced to hit the left lane and go top third, which this player may just say, all right, I'm going to ignore these players on time and then I'm going to play for these spawn traps and he could like sit in a corner, wait, boom, he kills this guy. And now because number one is pushed up, he can now force number one to spawn all the way back here. And then by the time all this is happening, ideally three and four are over here. They, cat, uh, they catch off guard number four. Number four dies. He spawns up over there. And then at this point, I would say number one should be um, like hitting a route and then pinching from top third just so we can get a triple collapse onto a bomb site or a control point. And once we get these kills, ideally, like let's say once again, our two teammates die. Ideally, at this point, we now have two players in their 25 yard line we know that they're all spawning up back here and then our two teammates can literally just beeline and get to a position to start spawn trapping them. And this takes waves of kills and ideally it'll take about two to three waves of kills to get into an ideal spawn trap like this. Now this is all for defense um, and it's because typically on defense you have a higher chance of obviously winning and pushing the enemies into a spawn trap. Uh, but this is one of those maps that are a little bit more balanced um, for offense because typically if you don't have a defense player over here in this quadrant, 
these enemies will always just be spawning at shacks. And when they spawn over here, they have the easiest routes to get towards B and obviously middle. Um, and on offense, these guys can constantly just literally just hit the front of B nonstop. And red team, they'll keep spawning over here. We can keep hitting B nonstop. Uh, but once blue team, they finally get a player pushed up into this quadrant, then we'll start spawning in this bottom quadrant. Um, so it goes both ways. Uh, I would just say specifically for Karachi on defense, try to prioritize a player over here. But if you are on offense and you're spawning up over here, just throw waves of kills until you can get a player over here. Once you get a player over here, they're spawning out. And now we can easily just capture this point. Uh, we just got to make sure we win the gunfights and don't troll, right? Um, which the way we would set this up is we would have this guy probably just sitting in a corner holding a cross. We can have this guy sitting top holding a cross. This guy could be looking like top balcony, looking middle. And then this guy could uh, occasionally look like yellow alley. And then we would just need to be in the setup, capture the point, win. Um, so that's for Karachi. Pretty simple, pretty self-explanatory. Uh, but let's talk about one thing just real quick. Um, and that's like breaking a A setup and breaking a B setup. So let's say these enemies, they have control of top third. They have control of red. They have a player um, sitting inside of B. Then probably their fourth player, they have them like top third. When we're spawning up over here and we need to get out of this spawn trap, really, you just need to do what we do in SD, and that's a 3 1 break, or that's a 2 2 break, or that's a spread break. Right here, obviously, we're in a spawn trap, so it's better off if we do like a 3 1 break. So if all three of these players are just rushing over here and just playing for these trades, this guy can hold pinch the entire time. And while this guy is holding pinch the entire time, these guys just need to focus on B. And once again, maybe we win the trades. Two of us die, two of them die. This player could then push up, sit right here, spawn these guys all the way out over here. Our teammates spawn up. Obviously, this guy would have bumped and got to the B point. And then now we have these guys at B while this guy watches pinch. Um, now... A spread break would be like if the enemies are set up at B and like they're in just this killer setup, which a lot of teams love getting into a setup like this, where you have a sub player just roaming around, causing a nuisance, can occasionally pinch. We have a player, obviously AR in time, AR sitting on this head glitch, occasionally watching the full pinch. And we have this player over here uh, just baiting and helping the player in red. Whenever we want to try to break B, this is where we break it just like uh, we try to break P2 hardpoint, where we should send a player on the far left route. And ideally, if we know that these enemies are in a B setup like this, we could just send one guy on the left lane all the way over here, not to worry about dying. And then by the time he gets back here, ideally, we would have a player that pushed through dome, or sorry, pushed through top middle to dome, and now he's top vent. And then... Our two other players would just be playing um, like bottom red or working up middle. So like these two guys could decide to just both go middle and then we can attack it all four from this side like this. And then we can all just kind of fly in, spread and just win the gunfights. Or we can have this guy go up middle and this guy just still play. Oh, come on and have this guy play over here. And once again, this is still setting up a pinch. We just need to win the trades, right? Win the bait and switches, which the way this would probably work is number two would probably shoot at one. One would get behind cover. Two would probably look to pick that up. Number three would say, yo, I have a kill. Number four should hopefully catch number three off guard for overextending. And once number three dies, he'll spawn over here. Number four can push up. Ideally, number four and number four would probably fight each other. Number one can get the pinch. And once again, a lot of just stuff would happen. And ideally, we would win the pinch. Bunch of trades would go down. These enemies spawn out. We spawn right over here. And we have a very easy route towards B. Uh, so we actually, quite frankly, just broke down all of Karachi um, in 10 minutes. 
So that's cool. Um, <laughs> any questions about the Karachi control? I would say the biggest thing about it is just understanding that there's a 25 yard line, 50 yard line, and another 25 yard line, and you just need to like play to get waves of kills. Like control is played a lot more like TDM and just working up the map, uh, like methodically. Uh, but if we don't have any questions about that Karachi, we can obviously move on to like the other maps such as Invasion and High Rise. I know a lot of people want to talk about High Rise, uh, but we'll quickly just talk about Invasion because uh, it plays the same way as Karachi. It's just a lot bigger and a lot harder to like clutch up on. Um, so middle lane, bottom lane, top lane. This team is normally spawning over here at Ice Cream and Back Palace. And as you guys watch every single CDL match, everyone's playing hard defense A, right? Like, we will be happy giving up B. Of course, we would still fight it, right? We all, you know, do our spread hit, and then we probably lose some gunfights. But then these guys can go for a pinch, and these guys would be in a setup. Uh, but while these guys go for a pinch like this, we can start getting these kills and our teammates off spawn can hit the front and ideally these guys are turning around and looking and we're just winning trades here and there and we can ideally try and win that B hit or I mean win that B break on defense all by simply having players push up middle pushing up left to flank B and there are two teammates who died they spawn up and hit front really simple um, and the best part about all of this is if our teammate number one stays alive, all these enemies just spawn back here, and now number one can literally just call out the entire cross the entire time, uh, which is just super duper unfortunate <laughs> for a blue team. Um, and obviously, once again, we would have our players push up, try to get into their 25-yard line, and we would be spawn trapping them the entire time. And like number three would be watching number one's cross and number one has number four's cross. And we would just work on not dying and just spawn trap the enemies. Now, obviously, if the enemies somehow ever do get towards A, the reality is we all spawn right here. So just literally spam grenade inside of A, get the guy out of the point and now play defense A, which probably one of the most basic um, A setups that we see a lot is we have um we basically have two players in mannequin one of these players could be a submachine gun player just roaming around uh so let's say that yeah one of these players are just a smg players just roaming around looking for kills being aggressive and then uh number one he's watching the entire cross and then number three can watch inside of red and hold the left lane and then of course number two can occasionally try to challenge out and look to kill people on the left lane. But if number one dies uh, for whatever reason, or if number one says, oh, I have to give up the cross, I have to give up the cross, number two can back up and watch the cross and just make sure that none of these enemies are trying to hit a rotation out over here. Which, to break B, poof, it's just like P3, where breaking, or sorry, not breaking B, but breaking A is just like breaking P3, where it takes a lot of time and, um, yeah, it just takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of time, where basically we would need a player middle looking at the cross, getting damage down, while these players over here are pushing up over here. And once again, we got to get waves of kills. So we probably get one set of wave, uh, one wave of kills like this, and then as we're pushing up, we have to get another wave of kills before we can even get to the hard point um, because these guys are all spawning up right here. So then we have to get another wave of kills. Boom, we kill them all over again. And then now, ideally, we can collapse on time. But as you guys watch in CDL, even if you guys play eights, ranked play, this is really hard to do to play for that spread break on A. Uh, so that's why most teams are always playing for defense and just... When you're playing for defense on control, you're either trying to get as many caps as possible and then just lead in caps so you always guarantee the defense, 
or you keep the caps tied and you have more kills so you can get the defense. Either one works. Uh, but invasion, kind of just like that Karachi, really simple. Don't need to spend too much time on it because now we get into high rise, which is, oh, it's an AR's heaven if you get to put the enemies in a spawn trap. Uh, so once again, 50 yard line, you got a 25, we got a 25, we have our top lane, we have our middle lane, and then we have our bottom lane. Um, there's a few ways you could play this. I'll tell you right now, you guys can either have four ARs out, you guys can have three ARs out and one sub, or you can have two ARs out with two subs. Um, and eventually that second sub would pull out a third AR um, occasionally. Uh, so we'll talk about red team real quick. Uh, once again, red team, really you just always need uh, a player watching the cross. So there's a blue box, or I'm not sure what it is, uh, but there's like a box right here. And from this one position, you can see the entire cross. You can see if they break glass over here and, they, and if they push out. Um, and occasionally, if you go a little bit over here towards the left, you could also look uh, bottom green. But even then, from this one spot, you can look all of helipad. You can look of all of these directions. I would say it is a must to always have a player right here. It is a must on high rise. And you can either designate a player that always plays right here. It's just an AR player that always comes right here. Or we can always bump, right? So like if we have like, you know, players pushed up like this and then one of our players died, this guy would push up to go help wherever the enemies are pushing. He spawns up and he gets to right here. And then maybe this guy dies. This guy is like, okay, we got to push through. This guy pushes through, helps him for this pinch. This guy spawns up and now he comes right here. And just always having a player in this one spot, super, super, super important because you get to call out where all the enemies are. You are the oracle on the map. Now, that being said, you kind of can do the same thing on this side uh, because on this side, you can also get damage down on propane. This guy can get damage down on propane. Obviously, get the middle cross, middle cross, and you can also look top helipad, top helipad. So it goes both ways. I would just say on defense, this is a must. On defense, this is a must. But on offense, you don't need to go there um, if you don't want to. Uh, it does help a lot, though, as you can see. Okay. So now, last thing I want to say about this high-rise map is the underground. The underground is a lot of the time not abused. So if you guys have a really good submachine gun player on your team, or if you have two really good submachine gun players on your team, always work that bottom middle. Because when you're on defense, you can always try to go for a pinch in their spawn and play to kill them. Or you don't even have to do that. You could just control the entire bottom middle. And whenever you hear them, oh, enemies on B, you can hop up, kill them on B. Oh, enemies on A, you can go bottom uh, blue and flank them on A. Um, you can do that on defense. Now on offense, on offense, I would say you could definitely utilize going bottom middle and going for the full flank just so you can kill this one player right here. When you kill this one player right here, he'll spawn back here, and then you can just maintain this position the entire time. And ideally, these enemies start panicking, so when your teammates push up, they can sit there and go, all right, let's go A. We can just triple out A, kill this guy, and then ideally, we can start capping the point. Have this guy watch pinch, this guy watch middle, this guy soak up time and watch their middle, and ideally, we can capture this A point. Um, which I would say that's probably the most important thing about playing offense is if you do get a player past the 50 yard line that can make a play, the player who gets past the 50 yard line to make a play has to call out where his team should go or what he's doing. So when you go underground, you can sit there and say, yo guys, start playing a, start playing a, because if you heard that there's a guy that sits on this box and a guy sits on like helipad steps. You could sit there and be like, all right, yo, I'm about to kill Helipad Steps. Boom, you get this kill. Boom, you get this kill. And now your teammates have a free route to A. Um, I just see it happen too much in ranked play where this player goes underground 
gets this two piece, but his teammates are instead going the opposite direction because they're going the opposite direction. They end up dying. And now we're in a two V two <laughs> and we're not even near each other. And it, it just, it's an issue that I see happen way too much. Uh, but regardless, when you're playing control, just work up the map, get your waves of kills, work as a team. Uh, obviously on defense, you're really just trying to constantly get map control, 25 yard line, get kills, 50 yard line, get kills. And then eventually we're all in their base to spawn trap them. Uh, but on offense, your job is to obviously, yeah, get kills and then push up the map. Uh, but a lot of the times you guys can try to do breaks like a two, two spread where we're going to have these two guys pushing over here to like uh force these guys to like uh like sp basically spread up and like because you guys killed these guys at B maybe these guys killed um one of these guys at B and then we finally kill these last four guys and because we have one player on B we could sit there and say I'll go A and when we all three go A all these enemies are going to panic and be like oh well the first went B and now they're just going to all like kind of fly out and play for B. And that's just going to set them up for failure because now they lose A. And then we can get full control of their base and like collapse on them or what have you. Um, but really, defense is always the same. Fill in the lanes. It's just a lot more TDM like play for your kills. Work up the map. 25 yard line, 50 yard line, 25 yard line. When you're on offense. Same thing, work up the map, but you could do like a 2-2, a spread hit, a 3-1, just to try and juke the enemies out. Just like S&D, where we make them think that we're going B-bomb, but instead we go A-bomb. Uh, but it was a short one today. I was sick, so sorry if I sound a little delirious, or maybe I said something that didn't make sense, I apologize. Uh, but do we have any final questions or anything? So basically, uh, going back to invasion quickly. At the last, yeah. You, you, when when defending A, it's it's actually better to not be on the point just to just to hold the different areas and just kill them and get them weak on as they approach. Because that's, that's basically what you were showing earlier. Oh yeah, yeah. So like, let's so say on a, you, you're limited on what you can see from the point. So like I was I was scrimming yesterday and I kind of felt like I didn't want to be on the point, but they were saying no 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 you kind of hold objective. I was like well I can't really see much from this point. I'd be probably better off. And I did actually leave the point and start getting kills. I just feel like that's a better thing to do. Yeah. So the only reason why they probably said play on the point is because when you play on the point, you can watch the entire cross, which is technically watching the flank. Okay. So then your teammate could be like uh, on tank right here. You have a teammate inside of rugs and then your other teammate could be on tank. And then in this setup, we are controlling everything. This guy has your left. You have the full flank. This guy has middle and this guy has middle as well. Um, and let's say you sit there and you see maybe two of them cross. You can call out, yo, two of them cross, two of them cross. And then ideally what would happen is probably Number two turns around, plays for these kills, and then number four would, uh, maybe number four would turn around and play for these kills. But basically now what happens is you're still watching this cross while they are playing a 2v2, and then you and your teammates still have like middle and A. Okay. Um, cool. Okay, yeah, cool. And, yeah, and then what might happen is you might see a third guy cross, and you're like, holy crap, three people cross, and then you can sit there and be like, well, <laughs> I'm not going to fight that. I'm just going to push up and, you know, play for the spawn trap because no matter what, if your teammates die, they're literally just going to spawn up right here. So they should win the gunfights. And regardless, gunfights should have already been down. And no matter what, enemies should be spawning over here. And that's when you pushing up is good because now, just like you holding the cross at A, now you're just holding the same cross. You're just pushed more up the map. And then you can call yeah, out, you know, how many more crossing. Yeah, because uh, really it's information is key. Um, getting obviously kills is important, but 
information is key because that's what helps us get the kills. Um, just like hard point, I actually watched one of your hard points on um, Skid Row, and I saw you playing like super aggressive when we had like three kills. Here, I I'll bring it up. Um, and it, it, again, yeah, again, it's all about just literally just making the game easier for your team. But like what happened was you had um, like a player in time, a player looking middle, a player looking bottom middle and like watching the rotation. And then you were up here. And when you were up here, literally you kept running around looking for kills and you did get kills. You did get kills. Uh, but like what if like you just sat in this window and now you can watch the entire full flank. Yeah. And now we know that these enemies can't kill number three from behind. And they definitely can't hit bottom middle. Um, and this actually makes it easier for number four. Because now number four can just watch tunnel the entire time. But if you did call out, oh crap, two going bottom middle. This guy can just turn and burn them. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. So that's, that's what they meant when they were saying. I need to. Yeah. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate it. But I mean, hey, it, it's good. I I've been watching you, man, and it looks like you're having fun. So keep it up, yeah. keep it up. Yeah, I just calm down a bit. All right, thank you, Elias. Absolutely, yeah. Good question. Thank you. Um, other than that, that concludes the session. Unless Vulcan Z, do you guys have any questions? Uh, I do have uh one question. Can the next lesson be about uh how to improve your gun skill and something like that? Uh, I'll send over a video uh, talking about that. Uh, just because uh, next week... Like the, yeah, go ahead. Is it like the VOD 30 or Lesson 30 uh, video? Cause yeah. Because I already watched that. Oh, okay, you already watched it? All right, no problem then. I'll just yeah. DM you and we can talk about something. Okay. Yeah, just because next week I want to prioritize uh, like breaking down individual maps. <clears throat> okay. I had a... Question two. It relates to Leon's prior question. Yeah. About invasion. Uh, so uh, if you can just pull it up. Um. So I think his question was relating to like sitting inside the objective on defense, right? Right. And my question basically is on offense is the uh, common like I guess only viable break pattern to like just run up B Street or run through made and just like kind of curve through their spawn and then play for the wave of kills there. And then if you're inside the objective, you can kind of counter that by watching them. Yeah, yeah. So if we already capture B, pretty much the only way you're going to be able to break A is by doing that spread hit and like collapsing from their base over here, over here, and like up middle. Um, but eventually you are correct that once we collapse, we would then sit in hill. And then when we sit in hill, we can ideally do a setup like this where once we're spawning up we can just kind of beeline over here and just make sure they don't cross the hill um, is there any is yeah. there is it at all viable to even like try to attempt to like break through a street if you're on offense um if you didn't capture b yeah absolutely so like what could happen is like this actually happened to me before where it was a break off so there was one player that like pushed up and like laid down or like sat in a corner somewhere or we just couldn't see him. I think he was laying down like right here holding an off angle. And then his three teammates just literally rushed up B. And then by the time they were like capping B, this enemy like literally ran past. He didn't even look for number two. He was just so focused on B. And um, what happened was this guy pushes up, starts capturing A. And now all of his teammates that die, ideally they would spawn up palace. And this guy's already soaking up A. And once again, now oh, we yeah, can work can. from A Street, yeah, and watch that yeah, cross. Can watch. Yeah, okay, got it. And that's kind so of like a... B, yeah, go ahead. B is gone. It's like, if B is gone, it's going to be hard to push up A Street, right? Because I'd imagine most of the enemy team is, like, watching A Street at that point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And if you remember from uh, last week's class, defense, they're on defense for a reason. It's because they're in an advantage, right? Uh, so... I mean, they have a head glitch, head glitch, head glitch, head glitch, head glitch, head glitch, head glitch. And over here, you have a head glitch that can blow up. I don't even know what to call that. I I, <laughs> I wouldn't even call that a real head glitch. This is a predictable head glitch. And then these over here are decent head glitches, but you're not going to get any kills. 
think. Right. Um, and if you're sitting all the way back over here, it's kind of like you're just going to be held the entire time. Good questions, though. And of course, by the way, too, the game is always evolving. So eventually there will be an amateur team, pro team. Maybe one of you guys will find another break that is really good for A. Uh, Did anyone watch the the game today or the surge versus uh No, unfortunately not. Who won? Who won? I, I don't uh, want to spoil surge. it, but Oh. Hey, well. You're good, you're good. No, no worries, but uh uh the the reason I'm bringing this up is because uh watch the control, the invasion control. It's kind of insane what happened for the last game, the last round. They're very into Invasion. Oh, here. Yeah, if we can talk about it, that'd be awesome. Yeah. Oh yeah, I also want to talk about uh Toronto Ultra Control yesterday against um what were they playing against? I think it was oh crap. Um uh it doesn't matter, but uh I think in the last round where uh Toronto three O the other team, I I think it was Kleenex who pushed up, uh, pushed up a uh, river tank, and and the other team just started spawning a uh, left side, uh, left side of ice cream. And I'm actually thinking that uh, that is actually a really good strat. So, and we can also utilize that f uh, for A if they somehow manage to capture A instead of B. Okay, so this is taking forever to load. Sorry. Uh, Vulcan, you're talking about when they push up river, they always spawn side ice cream? Uh, correct. Right. And then you are talking about a defense spawn trap, or were you talking about how to break out of this? Uh, both. That it, it is a pretty good spawn trap, but how do we usually break out of this as well? Yeah, yeah, so... Ideally, on red team, they're pushed up, so you're actually in a real spawn trap, so you're screwed, and you would have to just, like, play the windows and, like, use your grenades and kill these guys. Um, so that's how you would break it, is you would know where they are, and then you would use all eight grenades to try and kill these players. Um, and you're going to have to dedicate lives. Like, no matter what, this guy very well may get a two-piece. Both of you guys die, but at least the third guy can kill him. And now we may actually get a spawn over here. Um, or more closer to Palace right here, making this guy irrelevant. So it's just, when you're on offense, you're on offense. Like, you just got to die. You got to invest lives to break out of it. Um, now, for whatever reason, if they didn't have a player push up there, and you're spawning over here at Ice Cream, I would say just all three of you start playing over here for that uh, either B or playing for A. And then the fourth player who spawns up, just wait. And I can guarantee you, eventually this enemy may say, ah, dang it, all right, let me go for a flank. And then boom, you're going to catch him off guard. He's dead. Okay, um, perfect. And, and one more question. It's kind of like a request. Can we uh, review a couple of odds I can record? Because it feels like I'm doing something wrong in some of the guy fight, gunfights I'm taking. Because, like... I think they are 60-40 gunfights in my advantage, but I s somehow still uh, keep losing them. And it just feels like kind of wrong, so I need uh, your help. Uh, yeah, I'm hoping this Wednesday I bring back Community VOD Review, uh, where I review your guys' gameplay. So I'm going to make an announcement, and you could send it in, but since you already asked, I think you can technically go first. <laughs> so, yeah, just DM me uh, the gameplay, and... I haven't recorded yet, but I am probably going to. Okay, cool. And Good. can we also like do it individually as well? Uh, that may be a little hard, but I'll yeah, no, I'll see. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, thank you so much. Yeah, yeah. Um, okay, Z. What happened over here? <laughs> yeah. So this was uh this was ridiculous. So uh, the whole game, the whole I guess yeah, the whole game uh it was basically Seattle Surge playing for guaranteed defense. Right. What you see here, Seattle's on defense, uh, and it sounds like uh, from the 
very beginning of the round, uh, Seattle or Miami breaks off and one person hits A and gets one tick, as you see on the board right now. And then they like cross over to B and like cap over it. And then look, look, I guess we can watch from here what happens. I think this is what we're talking about, basically paying for the wave of kills. Yeah. I'm like, we got all those kills to finally get up to the 50-yard line, and now we know that we need to get another wave of kills just to get up to that 25-yard line. We cross, and now the second we cross, we just got to hold the cross. Oh, damn. Number one was supposed to win that. Number seven choked his gunfight. That was a miscommunication between seven and six. Wow. Yeah, so already the biggest mistake um, was number seven. He was waiting for someone to come help him break. So he's waiting for number six. And then number three kills number five. And then number six is like, oh, well, let me help that. And there's a miscommunication, right? So that's a solo challenge. And wow, Vico's just not dying. It was zero HP. It literally showed that he had zero. That's messed up. <laughs> I mean, this is what I was talking about, where now they just need to literally hold the cross and prevent the enemies from pushing up. Uh, but at this point, they know that they're up live, so they're just like, all right, let's just stack it. Uh, that was insane. Thank you for showing that. They didn't win that. It would have been a 3 0, which is kind of ridiculous. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right. Yeah, they almost uh, reverse sweeped, which is crazy. Dude, man, I'm so sad that Surge won. I was hoping Heretics were going to go 4-0. Or what? was it going to be 5-0? Mm, I don't know. Oh, yeah, Toronto also beat Surge uh, yesterday. That was actually like a clean win. Yeah, Surge lost it, like, three games in a row from when they first won. Like, Yeah, like the entire Toronto team was like a fry in that day. I was honestly just so, like... On cloud nine. <laughs> like, great recovery from the Boston Breach loss. That it, yeah, it's amazing. Yeah. All right. Well, guys, that concludes the class for today. Um, Thank you guys so much for stopping by. If you do have any other questions, please feel free to message me personally. I'm always happy to help. Oh, yeah. Uh, when are you going to DM me for, uh, for the uh, conversation and uh, the VOD review? Yeah, I'll probably just hit you up like later tonight or something. And yeah, okay. Well, yeah. it's like almost two a.m. for me, so I'm gonna get some sleep. Okay, cool. You probably have a message tomorrow morning then. Okay. Perfect. Yep. Uh, either way, I'll announce it in the community vod and just let everyone know, just because finally have free time after the holidays to bring it back up. Can't wait. Um. All right. Thank you so much, guys. You guys are you. free to go if you'd like. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Jason. Yeah, we'll in, Always uh, appreciate it. Day. Thank you, Vulcan. Vol much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Z. Hope you all have a great day. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.